there, my lovely friends, and welcome back to another travel vlog. It seems like the autumn season has slowed down time, and even looking back to these moments from our trip seems like so long ago, though it's really only been a couple of weeks since. So come along with me and follow in my footsteps and the path that led us to our middle Georgia vacation. David and I are ready to go. This is my traveling outfit of the day. Everything's packed up in the Jeep and we're ready. We're just gonna do the last few minute things and get on the way. We're excited because it's actually the first day of fall and we are gonna go on a little road trip. Hey honey, are you ready? Waiting on you. Okay, let's get ready to go. We're going up to Pine Mountain, Georgia today, right? Yes, we are. Calibrate Gardens, Pine Mountain, Georgia, Warm Springs. Warm Springs. So we might uh, do a little recording on the way. If not, we'll show you the Airbnb when we arrive. <laughs> Our first destination to explore was the Franklin D. Roosevelt State Park, which is Georgia's largest state park at over 9,000 acres. Driving around the park grounds was so beautiful and they had a really charming visitor center besides a great view. We were able to acquire a park map and get our bearings and a better understanding of what the park has to offer. It was just so nice to be in the sunshine and feel the fresh outdoor air, a truly perfect start to our vacation. We drove on up to Dowdle's Knob Overlook, which is an attractive spot for observing the view of the valley, which seems to stretch on for miles. The wind was much gustier up here, but it felt so good and the view really was breathtaking and peaceful. Another area of the park that we explored was the scenic lake called Lake Delanor, which boasts of good fishing and boating, but I just enjoyed gazing out at the sun's reflection on the water.
finally made it to our Airbnb and so I thought I would just show you what it looks like inside. Let's go. It's really pretty and modern. I love the color of the walls. I like the modern art on the walls too. It's nice and bright. So let's see, we have a little hallway here, two bedrooms. We have this smaller room and this is where I plop down our two pillows, but I don't think we'll be staying in this room. Although it's nice, it has a TV and let's see, a little closet, that's nice. Oh wow, this is interesting. Cool, I think this might have been original. That's neat. Let's see. This is the room I'm sure we'll be staying in. This is more like a master room. Definitely has kind of a modern um, design scheme going on, but it's clean and I think that this style lends itself really good to the way the house is. You know, sometimes homes just kind of lend themselves to the style that they take on. Got some extra items in here. Really good. I'll definitely be hanging up a lot of my clothes so they don't get too wrinkled. And the bathroom's really cute. The bathroom's in here. And I really love the gray and black color scheme. So cute. What does it look like in here? Ooh, it's really nice. You get a tub and a shower. That's great. It's really pretty tiled. Let's see. What's in this hall closet? I like the little doorknob. Ooh, so you could actually do your laundry while you're staying in here. That's really convenient. A stackable washer and dryer saves space. That's really good. The kitchen, very clean and bright. I really like the countertops. That's a nice touch. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. And we were curious about what the coffee situation would be like. So I see that you can make your own steamed water for tea or they have a Keurig with plenty of pods. That's really nice that they offer that. All right. Okay. Really nice. And this is our stuff that we plop down here, but the dining room is really cute. I love these chairs. They're smooth. And the lighting fixtures are all really cool. I've noticed. Hey, honey. Hey, honey. <laughs> yep, he's exploring around too. So there's three TVs here, so you don't have to worry about missing your favorite show. So that's the tour, and so I guess now it'd be time to get ready to unpack. After David and I had unpacked and rested, we decided to walk into the quaint and charming town of Warm Springs, where we were staying, and look for some dinner. The town was decorated with so many cute and festive displays, and it truly did feel warm and welcoming right away. We decided to eat at the Bullock House, a southern comfort buffet highly recommended and a local favorite. The food was so good, and we loved everything we tried. We tried our best not to overeat, though it would have been really easy to do so.
think Warm Springs was the perfect place for us to stay because from there we could go off in different directions to see different places on our list within a two hour window or less. I reserved our tickets online for Callaway Gardens and I was really looking forward to this. I wasn't expecting the grounds to be so beautiful and picturesque and it was so peaceful and felt like we had the whole place to ourselves. So I highly recommend that you visit there on a Sunday if you plan to go. Their nature and welcome center was so neat and the attendant was really friendly and helpful in welcoming us and answering our questions and providing information. They also had a cafe there, but we decided not to eat, even though it smelled really pleasant. Locals can get a yearly membership to the gardens, and I really think that if I lived closer, I would like to because it was just so scenic, and all of the trails provided a great way to enjoy the grounds by foot or by bicycle. There was also a cute chapel there where guests can reserve for weddings, and visiting this area was really tranquil and like a scene from a fairy tale. The Butterfly Center was certainly a highlight attraction, and we really weren't expecting it to be such a fascinating and special place as it was. It's the season for the Blue Morpho Butterflies, and so they were just hatching and being spotlighted as the center of the show. Their bright blue wings were so vibrant and eye-catching, and all of the butterflies were so mesmerizing and more stunning when seen in this habitat. And the butterflies seemed to really like David and really trust his touch. The flowers, plants, and various botanicals were all very interesting too, and we thought that they did a lovely job of making the butterfly exhibit a wonderful experience in every way. We came upon a part of the grounds no longer in use. This observatory area is long since abandoned and nature is taking over. We thought it reminded us of a scene from Jurassic Park and it was just neat to have a look around, though we didn't linger or trespass.
too much. Surprisingly, Callaway Gardens also has a beach. It's an area designated at Robin Lake, and the water was so clear and inviting. After we'd explored around Callaway Gardens, we decided to leave for a while and go into the town of Pine Mountain to visit some of their charming shops and antique stores. We don't usually do much shopping, but we like to look and just find inspiration from the whimsical items and in the way the shops showcase their displays. Is he sulking? Because there was a dog here? Oh. How cute. That was their logo, a little dinosaur? Yeah, because they come from fossil fuels. <laughs> That's clever. Show me again. Oh. Hmm. With extra time in our afternoon, we decided to visit the fish hatchery in Warm Springs, where we just walked around and looked at the fish exhibits. Um, we just kind of walked around the outer perimeter of the grounds because the office wasn't open to the public on Sundays. It was evening and we had rested and eaten dinner, we were ready to go back to Callaway Gardens for their pumpkin palooza. It was a festive pumpkin extravaganza that the gardens boast of this time of year and something I was really looking forward to.
Everything was made out of pumpkins, even if not real ones, and it was very magical and special, certainly a festive and whimsical experience that they did a terrific job delivering to guests. We even entered a corn maze after dark and it was really fun and just challenging enough so that luckily we didn't get too lost. Everything took on a whole new charm after dark and the lighted displays were really impressive. closer to Macon and Columbus, is it? Or mostly over towards the Macon area? Macon and Jackson, Georgia. Over towards the Macon and the Jackson, Georgia areas to see these state parks that we've never visited. And I hope that we can get some little badge or decal to commemorate where we've visited. But if not, we'll just document in our little passport travel book and get some good pictures, check a couple more of our lists. Of course, it's beautiful weather, and it has been beautiful weather up here, and we're really enjoying that. Slightly cooler than home, and some autumn leaves beginning to show. We will uh, say hey to you again later this afternoon, so thank you again for watching. Bye.
David and I were really overwhelmed by the beauty of the state park and we spent a good bit of time hiking the trails and letting ourselves get submerged in nature and finding peace in the sounds of the waterfall, the birds, and the wind through the trees. Certainly one of the most picturesque and scenic parks that we've visited thus far. I'm very happy that we got to experience this gem. We also visited this not so impressive state park. Uh, we just wanted to cross it off our list. But aside from having a very autumn decorated welcome center, which was cute, the only other thing that caught my eye was this neat old footbridge in the woods that looked like it had been there unused for a long time. Someone we met out and about told us of this trail in the Piedmont Wildlife Refuge, and we enjoyed both the welcome center and the off-roading trail that stretched on for quite a few miles along a scenic path, perfect for a leisurely drive. When it was time to seek out lunch, because all of our adventuring and exploring worked up big appetites for us, we headed to Jackson, Georgia, where one of the top five best barbecue restaurants is located, and noted for its honorable mention in Southern Living, Fresh Air Barbecue has a large fan base and a high notoriety, and so of course we had to check it out for ourselves. I'm not a huge fan of barbecue, but this was very tender and tasty, and I even asked if I could get a look at the pit and the kitchen, and they were more than welcoming to oblige with a good old Southern hospitality. The historical downtown hub of Jackson was quaint and we were surprised to find out that it was a filming location for Stranger Things. And they even offer movie tours and have shops dedicated to fandom of the series, which I'm a fan and found this to be a pretty cool and unexpected treat. Which, speaking of treat, of course we found a coffee shop called Lucy Lou's and they had some delicious autumn coffee selections to choose from. <laughs> Our last 
last night there was sad because we weren't ready to end our vacation, but it was made better by a delicious dinner prepared by the friendly folks at Franklin's, a local eatery in the heart of Warm Springs. With an extensive menu, a friendly staff, and a lovely outdoor seating area, this quaint restaurant was the perfect way to end our stay at the charming town of Warm Springs. On our way home, we veered off course just slightly so that we could stop at a state park for a visit. We were happy to visit Georgia Veterans State Park and cross it off our list, and it was a really cool and interactive learning experience. Like a history lesson visually enticing, their Welcome Center had so much info to share about every war and helped gain more appreciation of honorary recognition for our veterans, our fallen soldiers, and those who served. Outside on the grounds, we were able to see actual tanks, planes, and helicopters, and other war vehicles. It was a little rainy and dreary, but perfect fall weather otherwise. Lake Blackshear is a huge lake that was created by a dam in 1930, and it brings guests there for fishing, staying at the resort, and for golf. We saw a good bit of wildlife too, including deer, birds, and an alligator. This is also the gateway to the short line train excursion, which we may one day do as well if we feel adventurous. Our last stop before home was in Cordille for lunch at a really cool tavern called The Real House, situated right beside some train tracks, naturally. I liked their style and the atmosphere there, and they seemed to be a really popular place. The food was delicious and comforting, and it provided a cozy place to duck in for some lunch while the rain fell outside and somehow signaled that our journey was about over as we headed home. 